Good morning, everyone. My name is Matthew Thompson. I'm from Dental Access. I'm the technical product manager. And today I will be presenting a webinar on how to find the right CAD CAM components for your restorations. So what are we going to cover today in this webinar? First up, what is an implant and how do we restore it? Then we're going to be talking about scanning for implant restorations. Implant libraries, a bit of a who's who in the zoo. What to consider when you're restoring implants and how you can benefit from CAD CAM implantology. So what is an implant? Pop down to Bunnings and buy a screw? No, of course, I'm kidding. Actually, what is an implant? It is a surgical component. It connects the jaw or the, the skull, the bone there to the restoration. It's most commonly titanium. It can also be a ceramic such as zirconia, and it will be inserted into the patient's jaw by a dentist or a qualified surgeon. Then it will be rest restored by a laboratory technician using either an abutment or a screw retained crown, or you can have a more advanced restorations such as bars or dentures. So how do we restore this implant? We could use a, a temporary cylinder. We could use a casting process as well on that temporary cylinder, or we can use CAD CAM technology. But how do we use CAD CAM technology? Well, we have a workflow so we can restore this implant using CAD CAM. First off, we have to scan, and the scanning can be done by an intraoral scanner or a desktop scanner. And what this tells us is the location of the implant. Talking about location, we have an orientation, so it can be in a certain position in XYZ space. And it can also have a rotation as well. It can be tilted forward or back, left or right, and also a rotation about the, the long axis of the implant. So where the, the hex of the implant, for example, might be facing. Once we know the location of the implant, we can design the restoration using some CAD software. And in this design, we interface, interface the restoration to the implant. And then finally, we have to manufacture it using our CAM software to either mill or 3D print. So scanning an implant. Let's have a look at this implant here, this, this photo I've taken from Dental Implants Gold Coast. Thank you for them for this photo. Looking at this, we can see that it's, it's difficult to see with the naked eye. Firstly, the implant is metallic, so it's going to be shiny and reflective. It's small, so it's going to be quite hard to capture the key features such as the interface. And it's also buried down in the tissue, as we see in this case, and there might be some blood as well. So th there's four reasons why it's difficult to scan an implant with the, with the naked eye as such. So what can we do about this? We can use a scan flag. So you can see on the left here, I've got the IO2B-B, which is from, from ELOS. The scan flag is, is bolted into the implant and then it stands proud above the soft tissue, making it quite easy to scan. It's also made from a material called PEAK and it's a nice surface that you can use to scan the implant very easily with an intraoral scanner or your desktop scanner. These can be autoclaved, so you can use them for, for different patients. And they're also radio opaque um, in the scan body, but not in the seating. And this enables us to see the seating of the, the titanium interface of the scan body into the implant and ensure it's all the way down. And as we see here, this, this example photo from ELOS, we can see that this particular scan body has been seated into the implant and can be very easily scanned as if it was another tooth. So that's scanning complete. Let's talk a bit more about scan bodies themselves. These are precision manufactured um, and to seat into the implant interface, whether you've got a trilobe or a hex or some other interface. For example, Elos MedTech um, are a Swedish company and they contract manufacture for Nobel Biocare. And because they contract manufacture, they know very accurately and precisely the dimensions of the implant interface. Hence, they can create an implant scan body that will interface perfectly with the implant. As I said, they're radio opaque for the, the seating verification. And typically they contain a screw um, so you can ensure that the scan body is seated correctly into the implant. So how do we use them? Once we've, we've scanned them, um, we then align it with our digital model of the same scan body. So you can see in the top right here, my, my purple scan body, um, the digital file aligns with my blue scan very well. 
once we know the location of the scan body, here it is here in XYZ space, this will tell us where the scan body is relative to the implant. Not just XYZ space, but rotations as well, as I spoke about before. And then once we know this location of the implant, as we see here in XYZ space, we can then design the restoration on top of this implant. So the next slide we see here at the top left that we've got the location of our implant in XYZ space. This tells us where the tie base is. Then the tie base tells us where the cement gap is. So this red surface you see here is the cement gap that's been defined in the implant library. Down the bottom left, you can see a zoom in image and a, a semi-transparent cement gap. And we can see that there's a very finely tuned cement gap exactly as the manufacturer recommends. Then finally, down the bottom right image, we see the tie base and the cement gap again, and a very beautiful crown I've designed on top of that. So that this workflow, we, we start off with the implant location, tells us where the tie base is, then that tells us where the cement gap is, which is ultimately our surface to mill, and then we design our crown on top. Once we've designed our crown, we have some control of the emergence profile. So if you want to have some pressure on the tissue or whatever you desire, you, you can control that. And also allows us to define our drill hole um, for, the, for the screw access channel, that is. You can have a, an additional diameter or you can have a curvature at the top of the screw hole. You can have many different design features as you choose. So that's the workflow for the CAD aspects. So the question, we often get asked is, which scan body should I use? Well, it also affects the implant library that you're going to choose, depending which scan body you choose. So in this instance here, I have a single Strauman implant on screen. So what can I do? One option is to use genuine componentry so I can have my Strauman implant with my Strauman scan body and my Strauman tie base. That's a very good option. Another option, is to use a third party tie base. So for example, we have Core3D who also provide their scan bodies for their tie bases. We have Elos MedTech who also provide tie bases for their scan bodies as do ND Trading, as do DES. Many, many different options. Or we can go with a scan body that is just the scan body only and relates to many different tie bases. I know for example that 3Shape have made a, a scan body of their own out of titanium. And this particular scan body tells us where the implant location is, and then you can use multiple different tie base libraries for there. So when you come to deciding which scan body am I going to choose, you have to think one step ahead down to the CAD, which tie base am I going to use? Also, you have an option for using the scan body as part of the healing cap. So NEOS have this, this scan peg solution where their healing cap has a hole on the top and you can fit a scan body into this healing cap. So this is another option to consider as well. Obviously with this particular NEOS example, you'll, you'll be locked into the, the NEOS tie base or other manufacturing options, but then you do have a nice healing cap as well. So lots of things to consider, but the key point is pick your tie base depending on which library you want. If you're confused about which tie base and library match up, ask the tie base manufacturer and they'll be able to tell you which library you can choose and which scan body. So thinking about a scan body, the generic scan body, what do we have to think about? Well, say you're doing full arch scanning, like in this example here I've got from Medit's YouTube channel. They've got a four implant case for a full arch implant bar or bridge. So you need to think how many scan bodies are in the pack that I purchase. In this case, you need to have four. It's much more accurate to have all four scan bodies in place when you do the scanning rather than just having one and shifting it between locations because that introduces a human error. You might subtly move the model which is not going to be very good when it comes to milling a bar for example. So you need to consider how many tie bases, sorry how many scan bodies are in the pack that you purchase for which particular application. Next up you need to think about what makes a good scan body we need to have some flat surfaces. And what those flat surfaces tell us are the height of the scan body and the rotation. So for this example here, I've taken from Biodenta, they have a very nice diagram talking about their scan body design. We can see on the top of the scan body, there's a flat surface, and then there's two flat surfaces as well to help us align the rotation of the scan body. Sorry, three flat surfaces actually, one's hidden on the back. 
There is a nice curved shape to help us identify where it is. There's a taper down at the bottom to ensure that we can have it emerge from the soft tissue and doesn't collide with the neighboring teeth. Another consideration is the height. We also don't want to have it too tall. So say you're doing an intraoral scan, you don't want to have it so tall that the patient can't actually open or close their mouth. So those are some things to consider with your scan bodies. Now let's move on to implant libraries and the considerations there we have to think about. So manufacturing options. I spoke before about how if you're going to choose a certain tie brace, tie base, you're locked into certain um, scan bodies and manufacturing options. So one example is, are you going to mill in-house or are you going to outsource this to a milling center? I've got some examples here of Panthera or Straumann who are large milling companies. With those particular milling centers, you may only have certain choices of materials, and this may influence the warranty on the parts, or if you do in-house milling, you have a lot more options for your materials, but you may have different uh, specific conditions for the warranty on these parts. Also, if you're, in your, if you're in countries like America, you may have FDA approval, which is necessary for a medical device or other countries have their own regulations. And for these certain regulations, you may have to go through a certain verified manufacturing center. So that's something to consider is what is the indication? Where are you? Which country in the world? And what warranty do you wish to have with your restoration? Also, we need to think about the CAD software. Is the CAD software open or closed? Open being you can manufacture in-house or send to anyone you can have control over different aspects of the design, or is it closed? Closed is often the case with these um, outsourced manufacturing centers. If they're going to provide a certain warranty, they'll control certain parameters, and that will close down some of the manufacturing options. So things to weigh up when you're, you're choosing your implant library. Also, another consideration is different scan bodies for the same implant that lock you into certain manufacturing options. For example here, this is a uh, scan body for the Nobel Procera system. You can see it's, it's conical, um, but this might be for a multi-unit, for example, because it doesn't have a particular direction associated with it. And that is a very good scan body for a very good system. Whereas if you're using another system, you might have to go with an ELOS scan body. So we've got the exact same implant, but we're gonna have a different CAD and different manufacturing. So these are more things to consider. And again, talking to, either the tie base supplier or the manufacturer will guide you as to which options you have as to whether it's a in-house outsource and which scan body to use. So more implant library considerations. How are you going to manufacture? Are you gonna do a one piece or a two piece abutment? I've got some photos here of some one piece abutments, some little thumb size titanium single abutments with pre-manufactured implant interfaces. Does your library give you this option or is your library only for tie bases? A tie base would be a two piece abutment because you have the implant, then piece number one is the tie base, piece two is the final restoration. So something to consider, what does your library allow you to do? Obviously these custom abutments are direct to fixture, which is of course a one piece or two piece because you've got a tie base in the way, not in the way, a tie base interfacing with your restoration, you'll have cement so it's not direct to fixture. Also, you need to think about, can I 3D print a model? So here I've got a photo of the new PMA uh, model analog from ELOS, which they use for printing analogs, of course. Some libraries that are older may not have a, a 3D printing option available. So that's something to look at and consider. Again, any questions, talk to the supplier, they'll be able to tell you. All this information, um, whether it's one piece, two piece, which scan body it is, can you 3D print, what manufacturing options do you have? This is all gonna be stored in the digital implant library file. If you're using three shape, this will be called a DME, which is a dental material export. Or if you are designing with ExoCAD, it'll be in a zip file, which you can download from ExoCAD's website, or other CAD softwares provide other options as well. Let's think about tie bases. What do we have to consider when selecting a tie base? Does it allow you to do an angulated screw channel? So this, this top picture, we have an example of an anterior tooth. We may not want the screw channel going through the facial aspect or the incisal edge. So we might want to rotate the screw channel back 
towards the, the palatal, for example. So you need to think, does my library allow this? Does my screw allow this? You may need a special screwdriver for that. Also, when you cement your crown onto your tie base, how is it held down? So in the bottom right, we see a picture of an Elos tie base, and we can see here that they've got cement grooves that allow more surface area to ensure that the tie base will be cemented well, strongly into the restoration. Also, anti-rotational notches. Does your tie base have any notches in it that prevent the, the crown or the restoration spinning around it on top? All good things to consider, and there's many tie bases out there that you can look at and, and make a decision as which is the best one for your restoration. So that's the, the how and the, the why of, of CAD-CAM implantology. How can we benefit from, from CAD-CAM implantology? Well, first up, it's accurate and it's repeatable. Because we scan a precision manufactured scan body with a scanner that's accurate down to 10 or fewer microns, it's going to be extremely accurate. It's also going to be repeatable. If you're in a, a lab, for example, you've got some scan bodies that you use multiple times. Because you will not be autoclaving them, it's, there may not be any um, degradation in quality there, so it's going to be very repeatable. Also, using CAD software, you can accurately predict where your implants are going to seat and how they're going to interface with the, the dentition for your restorations. That adds to the repeatability, ensuring your process is consistent. As I said, the scan bodies do ensure the accurate position of the implant. And repeatability, we want to know exactly the same cement gap for every tie base and every restoration on top. Of course, this is much better than, than scanning a tie base. There's always going to be some error when trying to scan metal. Maybe you've sprayed it. That will bring in some error. You may not have the exact same cement gap that the recommended um, value is defined by the manufacturer. Another implant, um, implantology care can benefit is visualize, visualization of restorations and the screw holes. So at the bottom of this, this slide, I have a picture of um, Exoplan. It's an implant planning software. And we can see here that the user has placed two central incisors, and this is going to help them visualize the restorations before they even place the implants. This can also assist with screw holes, thinking, well, do I need to rotate the implant slightly to avoid a screw hole punching through the, the facial aspect of that tooth? Another thing to consider and another benefit of, of CAD-CAM implantology is being able to plan ahead doing some restorative based implant planning to ensure we not only have a, an implant placed well for medical reasons, but also for restorative reasons. As I said, this assists, assists with implant planning and prevents the screw hole cutting through the facial aspect. There are many benefits to, to CAD-CAM implantology, and I hope this has provided you some, some good insights into, into what to choose, um, how to make your decision, what things to consider, and some of the benefits. Also immediate loading. Um, this case up the top left, I've done an immediate loading case where you plan the, the implant placement, as we see at the bottom, and then you can immediately design and manufacture a crown to um, do some immediate loading. So there's another advantage of being able to plan ahead, do your restorative based implant planning and provide not only a surgical guide to the surgeon, but also a immediate loading crown at the same time. And that also helps with the patient outcome. Excellent, well, thank you very much for attending this webinar. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on one of our social media channels or give us a call, look at our website, and also you can stay up to date with any upcoming webinars or information with our Dental Access newsletter. Thank you very much.